When Six Flags St. Louis opened the world's fourth stand-up roller coaster, its life would be short-lived. A rider was ejected to her death only a month after its launch. What made the accident even more shocking was that no apparent reason for the tragedy was ever found, and all three restraints were locked and closed when she fell. The impossible had somehow happened. However, some experts had valid theories about what might have happened. This is the story of the Six Flags Railblazer tragedy. Visiting Six Flags St. Louis today, you'll find the River King Mine Train. Opened with the park in 1971, it was the first coaster on the site. However, a little known fact is that the River King Mine Train you know and love today isn't entirely the same one that opened with the park. After 13 years in service at what was then known as Six Flags Over Mid-America, competition from other parks and the need to keep guests coming back led to what would turn out to be a short-lived exit. In June of 1984, Six Flags converted the River King mine train into the Railblazer, a state-of-the-art stand-up roller coaster. The original tracks were kept, receiving a fresh coat of paint along with new trains and a catchy new name. The stand-up roller coaster was an entirely new concept at the time. First seen in Japan in 1982, the arrival of the Railblazer at Six Flags Mid-America was the third in the United States. Riders on the Railblazer were kept in place with three restraints. One over the shoulder, one around the waist, and one around the knees. Six Flags brings you a startling new concept in roller coasters. No seats. Railblazer. Six Flags' awesome new stand-up roller coaster. It'll run a chill right up your spine. It'll shake your knees. It'll curl your toes. You can't escape till we bring you back standing up. Railblazer. If you think you can take it standing up. Railblazer. Come to Six Flags and see what we've dreamed up now. However, the conversion from a mine train to a stand-up roller coaster at Six Flags Mid-America would be a short-lived experiment. An accident just one month after its launch would spell its doom. On July the 7th, 1984, a month since the opening of the Railblazer roller coaster, 46-year-old Stella Holcomb and her husband Carl visited Six Flags over Mid-America. The couple had travelled from Indiana to see the Miramac Caverns, but decided to visit the park before heading home. After an enjoyable morning at the park, Stella and Carl boarded the back car of the Railblazer roller coaster. Carl rode on the left, while Stella stood to his right. Most likely at the first helix after the second chain lift, a section of the track with a sharp turn and a sudden dip, Stella somehow slipped free from her harness and was thrown 20 feet or 6.1 meters from the ride. Impacting a tree before hitting the ground, Stella, unfortunately, suffered unsurvivable trauma. She was pronounced dead at the scene shortly after being found. Had the ride pulled into the station with Stella's restraints open, the accident would have been easy to comprehend. However, that was not the case. All three restraints were locked, showing no sign of malfunction. What should have been impossible had somehow happened. How had she been tossed from the ride? In the immediate aftermath of the accident, the ride was closed pending an investigation. Park officials and experts alike were perplexed as to how Stella could have come free from her restraints. In St. Louis, Missouri, the Railblazer stand-up roller coaster has not rolled one inch since Stella Holcomb lost her life while riding it Sunday night. As we made this sharp whip, she was gone. Just like that. We have a locked shoulder harness, a locked knee brace, and a, and a third safety belt that's also locked on top of it. So, again, from a theoretical standpoint, that shouldn't occur. A Six Flag St. Louis spokesman, Laurie Odom, suggested that Stella must have fainted. Her husband disagreed. I had hold of her hand when she left me. That car was like a whip. It just jerked real bad when we came around that curve and she just flipped out. However, the Six Flags spokesman said there was no other explanation than fainting for Stella having fallen from the ride. Interestingly, and maybe more telling, 
When the ride reopened more than a month later, it had been fitted with an entirely new restraint system. Carl Holcomb and Stella's relatives sued Six Flags and Arrow Huss, the maker of the Railblazer, claiming they were negligent in the operation and the design of the ride. The family sought $6 million in compensation. No cause of the accident was ever pinpointed. A state report on the accident concluded there was no mechanical failure of the latching and restraint mechanism. The restraint system was reasonably latched and secured. Although this didn't imply it was adequate, only that it was working. The report mentioned that the victim's weight, listed as 260 pounds, or almost 118 kilograms in an autopsy report, might have contributed to the accident. It speculated that the harness might have been fitted too loose due to her size. As mentioned earlier in the video, the life of the Railblazer was short-lived. After a drop in popularity following the accident, it was converted back to the River King mine train just a few months later. The family of Stella Holcomb reached a $1.8 million settlement with Six Flags Theme Park and Arrow Huss, the ride's manufacturer. The money was split between her husband Carl and other members of her family. Let me know in the comments section what you think caused this accident. Did she really faint? Was it her weight? And either way, do you think the restraint should have been designed to accommodate those scenarios? Or at least, should ride operators have stopped her from riding if she was indeed unsuitable to ride? And as always, thanks for watching.